doctor has less than 30 hours of nutritional uh, uh, education. So don't rely on that. Yeah, the right. doctor has only been taught to treat a sick person. A doctor does not know what to do with a healthy individual. Today we are interviewing Maurice Dower and uh, because of his interest and I guess use of the carnivore diet. Uh, Maurice, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, for sure. Um, so I can go back as far as, uh, let's say, since uh, 2001, 2002, that's when I actually started going into the health and fitness as well too. But the thing is, you know, what we thought was healthy wasn't really as healthy as we thought because every time there is an issue the only thing is we end up uh, going and asking would be always an MD doctor um, and of course you know you talk to any doctors they always tell you well you know increase your fiber increase your grains increase uh, uh, a lot of the um, 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 so-called so uh, seeds and so on and so forth and yet um, you go home you feel Sometimes exhausted, sometimes you feel tired, your sleep crashes, your cognition is, is not there. And you go back to the doctor, you know, I was only roughly within my 20s. He's like, it's old age. And uh, oh, wow. yeah, right? you, you know, old age at, at, at 20, that's actually your prime time. So, so what happened is um, when I was in health and fitness, um, going back, I ended up having a heart attack in 2015. Now, nine years prior to the 2015 incident, I was actually, I went fully vegan. Um, you know, right. I would eat uh, almost so much on a daily basis. We're talking pounds and pounds of greens and grains just so I can be satisfied, but I was never there. And I ended up reaching, you know, a weight of about uh, 204 pounds and after I was, uh, I thought I was on a healthy diet, I ended up having a heart attack. And within that time frame of almost two, three months recovery, I kind of opened up my mind to what is health. Um, and is it true that the food we are eating and consuming, are we actually feeding a disease or are we actually preventing a disease? And mm -hmm. that's when I actually opened up my mind to a lot of different aspects out there. Uh, what is health and what we should be eating? Should, be, should we actually be in a center aisle grabbing everything in a cardboard box or a can? Or should we actually be sticking to a single ingredient? And that actually, that three months of me going through that healing phase, the funny thing is the only thing I ate was, was meat, was strictly carnivore. And it's funny, I went from a 204 pounds within about three months, I lost about 20, 30 pounds. And I thought, you know, if I'm actually losing weight naturally without working out, then obviously this has something to do with it. And that's, yeah. what, kinda, and that's what kinda got me into so much in depth as of 2015 till today, you know, things has changed and I've tried lots, of course. You, you've probably seen, mm -hmm. I went from a paleo ketogenic, then recently been doing carnivore for, for a few years right now. Well, and let me ask you, so, you know, you went ahead and changed from looking at those foods that are in the boxes, you know, the cans that the doctor's telling you to get and not feeling satiated. How did you feel as you were losing the weight and you were consuming just the meat, basically? To, to, to be honest with you, um, you know, every time you have a bowl of grains or you have broccoli, Brussels sprouts, so on and so forth, you eat so much, you feel so bloated, and yet you have to sit on the couch for about an hour, two hours to feel at ease a bit, therefore you can be able to move. And the moment you're able to move two hours later, guess what? You're hungry again. So imagine me coming from a uh, eating almost six meals a day every two and a half mm. to three hours when I actually uh, went on carnivore in 2015 for three months I actually went down to only eating twice a day and the funny thing is you know I would uh, 
cut a piece of steak, tenderloin, it could be roughly anywhere between 8 to 10 ounces. I would eat the whole thing, of course I would sear it, and I'm satisfied, I'm satiated, and I feel so, so at ease and so relaxed, and yet I'm lasting 5, 6, 7 hours before I actually feel a hunger. Like, I'm mm -hmm. talking real hunger. Um, sometimes you might feel a slight hunger throughout 2-3 hours, but sometimes that could be a lack of specific deficiency in nutrients, especially electrolytes. But once you're actually eating that meat, and you're getting all the necessary nutrients, minerals, and vitamins, essential fatty acid, your body's satisfied, and it gives you such a long energy that you can actually focus. And to be honest with you, in that 3 months, all I did was spend a lot of time reading. Before I would actually read for like 10-15 minutes, I get bored, I get sick of it, my mind is not focused, and I drop it. Now I was actually grab a book, I would finish it in one day, and I'm so focused, and I'm actually capturing so much uh, information as well too. So it changed my my whole thinking of uh, diet. And I, don't 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 get me wrong. I'm not putting vegans down or, or anything <laughs> like that. But the amount of uh, uh, food you eat compared to the amount of small portions of meat you eat is like night and day. Almost like a steak of like eight or ten ounces. It's almost giving you energy as much as you're eating a couple of pounds of, of greens. Mm -hmm. Well, you also have uh, nutrients are much uh, higher in the meats than they are in most vegetables. So that's definitely one reason that I imagine that you're getting that feeling and feeling good. Because a lot of the vegetables, you know, each vegetable has its merits. Correct. But they also have uh, downfalls. You know, they got the lectins. They got the phytonutrients and the oscillates so it's kind of a balancing act if you do play the vegetables so that is true and you know when you look at it you know the meat is almost like bioavailable right you can and i tell this to everybody when you have a piece of steak you can actually get up and work out and do exercise and go for a run you're not exhausted you're not tired you don't feel like there's something stuck in your gut and you need to digest yeah, it yeah, but, right right and and your body's fully satisfied yes you eat the greens um, you know, you got the anti-nutrients, the phytic acid, so, so, so much anti-nutrients that is pulling out instead of adding. So suddenly you're feeling exhausted, tired, and you're losing specific vitamins and minerals. And these vitamins and minerals, um, if they are gone on a, such a high deficiency for so long, suddenly the body's going to end up giving up. Like what happened is your heart is your most important organ. And it's one of the biggest muscles. So every time it loses certain minerals, it starts to pull from other areas in the body, start to pull from your organs and other areas. But suddenly when you end up experiencing a heart attack, obviously the nutrients are becoming pretty much to none. There's not right. much minerals left to actually pull anymore. Finally, you end up crashing. You'll have uh, a malfunctioning mitochondria. And once you get a malfunctioning mitochondria, the first major, major disease you'll end up getting is a heart disease. Okay. Well, and let me ask, I mean, I don't want to get too personal, but are you, how, I guess, did your doctor respond after, you know, your heart attack and with the better choices you were making with your nutrition? Oh, wow. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, you know, I was shut down. I was shut down so much by my doctor. Um, and I'll be straight honest with everybody here. Um, I've went through almost seven to eight different doctors that every doctor I see, I would get shut down because of the diet I'm on. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, what I end up doing, I end up hiring a private doctor to actually work with me only to allow me to get enough blood work done. And he would never question my authority. He would never question what I ate. We're only looking at blood work. But the funny thing is, a doctor um, does their school in eight to 12 years, for example. They're only taught to, uh, not to work with a healthy individual. They're only taught to work with a sick person. So you as a sick person, you walk in, I can open my book, okay, Maurice has this specific issue, these are the specific medication I'm going to give you. But right. if you walk into a doctor's office and you are a healthy individual, they look at you and they feel lost. 
they feel that they don't know what to do and how to actually fix a healthy person. So to them, they look in a book, they can't find an answer and they just assume that, hey, it uh, runs in the family, you have heart disease issue and let's just drop it there. Here's your 11 to 12 medications, you're gonna be on them for life. And mm. you know, that changed my whole routine. I actually was on these medication for about three months Mm -hmm. But after that, I started dropping one after one after one. And I've dropped all of them within about roughly, give or take, a six-month period. And I was left with one, only one. Um, now, these medications, all they do is just, you know, they keep your arteries flexible. They lower your cholesterol. They do so many things, so many side effects as well, too. Like, it's funny. You'll be on these medication. Uh, your cognition is totally out. You're like... Uh, you can't think, you can't focus, it's like a foggy brain. You can't sleep, you have bruises in your, in your uh, large muscle groups, such as your, your thighs, um, your chest, your biceps. You end up getting bruises everywhere. Um, you can't sleep, you're constantly having nightmares. So these medications are actually aging that person so much that you feel, what's the point of living? You either you know, take that route, which is I've seen hundreds and thousands of people I've met, or you can take one step above and beyond it, grab a nutrition book and just possibly read it and get some knowledge of what's going on in life and how did this disease come to me. The only thing I would always say is you either eat to feed a disease or you eat to prevent a disease. Mm. And what we know till today, they still wouldn't have any clear answer of exactly what is health. Um, you know, but when you actually look into it and, you know, just by observational, when you eat something such as meat, you feel amazing. You eat fish, you feel amazing. You, you eat other ingredients or mixed ingredients from a metal aisle and suddenly you think you're feeling amazing, but yet you have one of the most important things is digestive uh, distress, uh, digestive issues. And... You go to the doctor, the only thing they tell you is it's old age. Um, I don't think there's anything such as old age. It's just, you know, figure out exactly what your body requires to thrive. Um, you know, don't look at food as entertainment. Look at food as to feed your good uh, microbiome because when you actually feed them with good nutrient dense, you, your body feel uh, so much more optimized and so much more healthier right. as well too. Now, we hear um, Ed, about fiber in the diet. How do you overcome, uh, you know, the essential fiber thing? They say you have to have fiber in your diet. What do you do to keep it running smoothly? You know, you know to be honest with you, I, I did the testing in between. And yes, I've listened to a lot of influencers. They say you, you do need it. You don't need it. Um, it does help with flushing cholesterol, so on and so forth. A lot of this stuff has always been a myth. There's no right. real answer or there's no real scientific data saying that we really need fiber uh, because, you know, you do get your body makes fiber from eating, consuming collagen, for example. It will actually turn around and turn it into collagen. And the way you can tell, if you eat a piece of meat, um, let's say you, you have a pound of meat, uh, the funny thing is, you know, this is my, my thinking you know, why there's, uh, you know, colon cancer, so on and so forth. From my research that I've done, so every time you feed, you, you eat fiber, that fiber becomes like, uh, it pushes everything off your colon, so pretty much you end up pooping and stuff. But our colon, they actually have a muscle. And when you actually eat meat or don't eat any fiber, that muscle is actually contracting. It contracts. So therefore, it passes if there's anything in your gut. That's why when you actually go on a carnivore diet or elimination diet, I call it, just because you end up losing so much weight. Because I've seen a picture over the years where you have your colon is about like three inches in diameter, but you have only about an inch opening where the rest is just food being stuck there. And we end up eating so much fiber trying to push everything, and that's why we end up causing constipation. But what happened is, if you let your colon actually start to contract itself, it will actually break the walls of the hardened food been sitting there for years and years and years. That's why you always have like a lower belly uh, fat or sometimes it's very, very hard to lose that weight is because of that issue. 
So the moment you actually go on an elimination diet and you have specific digestive enzymes you're taking, that wall will actually break down. So we've seen one study with one, one of my clients, they did uh, the testing and they only had roughly about an inch in diameter. And after going on a carnivore diet for about six months, that one inch was almost a full two and a half diameter just opening because everything broke down. Like imagine, he lost about 35 pounds, but still mm -hmm. that 35 pounds, most of it was coming from inside of your system. So do we really need fiber? Yes and no. Based on what you eat and based on whether you like to cheat once a week or once every two weeks, then definitely have some fiber so it pushes any garbage out, let's just say. But if you're eating like a strict carnivore, getting enough collagen. And what I'm saying about collagen is uh, every 100 grams of protein, you roughly require about 5 grams of collagen. So very, very small amount. And that's why you see in the steaks, you have that white lining and all that collagen in it. So you get, that's why there's so little of it, but you only need very small of it to actually satisfy the, your system, satisfy your body. Um, if you cannot get it, definitely you can supplement 5 grams of collagen if you're going to consume more than 100 grams of protein, which is good. If you're going to consume up to 120 or plus, then adding uh, 10 grams a day would be plenty. Um, but is it going to affect your poop or affect the way uh, um, you have to go on a daily basis? It does not does not at all um, and, and uh, I get a lot of questions from carnivorous uh, people when they actually become carnivore is like I feel constipated I'm not going to the toilet I'm not doing this I'm like are you really constipated or is your body actually using 100% of your food that you're not actually nothing's coming out so that's the question right. I always Wow, ask. I never thought about that. Wow. So, 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 so there's some misunderstanding from a lot of customers. They think that, no, we are constipated. No, because they got used to the idea of actually going uh, and pooping possibly once or twice a day. But your system is going through a shift. And once that shift becomes fully adapted and all the toxins have been gone out of your system, you'll actually start to go regularly. But the amount is like zero to none almost. Wow. And just with, uh, you know, the information that you're providing us, um, it's obvious that this is a passion for you. Um, I, I've seen a little bit that you've done a ton of research about kind of how the diets of of human humankind has changed mm -hmm. uh, through time. Do you want to kind of clue us in about um, how, I guess, we've gone from very carnivorous to, I guess, where we're at now, where we're food, pretty yeah. much eating crap. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I think, you know, uh, when it comes down to health and nutrition, there's a big role that we've been controlled. Um, how mm -hmm. are we being controlled? Is it to reduce population is it we have you know we're overpopulated so on and so forth so there's something happened um, let's go back you know 20 years uh, 20,000 years ago when agriculture started or when we start to actually have to um, store certain foods and stuff because you know if you go back to our ancestrals you know two and a half million years ago the only thing we were able to consume was uh, uh, bone marrow and fast because that's the only thing we can get our hands on then in time we start to actually our brains start to become bigger and more smarter just because of the amount of dense nutrients fat and keep in mind you know 60 70 percent of your brain is cholesterol cholesterol is a good guy is a major antioxidant so you have the essential fatty acid the fat so our brains start to get bigger and we start to kind of think above and beyond so we start to actually hunt so at 2 million years ago or so, so we start to actually hunt and, and eat, of course, meat. And we start to actually move in and we start to actually become more of a human where we can actually hunt and adapt and, you know, stay warm and actually do so many things. And of course, at that time, don't get me wrong, we did have berries available, but only wild berries, not some of the berries you would actually see in a retail store. Nothing like that. Nothing was man-made, of course. Everything was wild and natural so we thrived for so many hundreds of thousands of years uh, sticking to that diet and and what happened is when you start looking into well how much water did we drink yeah we, we, we didn't really drink a whole lot because a lot of our foods were actually uh, consumed raw so you get more than enough 
uh, proper uh, mixture of water with minerals and, and that meat you eat, for example, or the berries you consume, salt, you know, salt was only introduced about 7,000 years ago. The only reason a lot of the stuff start to be introduced because we were controlled by government, let's say 20,000 years ago when agriculture started, uh, we start to actually direct the flow of the water instead of the flow of the water hitting every single every single rock and producing minerals such as magnesium which is one of the most important electrolyte so we lost we lost so many minerals in the water and suddenly um, when the scientists they start to find out well we lost we lost so many minerals we lost this well we found Himalayan the, the rock maybe that's how we can uh, get more salt into our diet because the animals are actually getting depleted because of the water movement and so many things we start to get restricted. So suddenly, of course, you know, uh, the human mind, you know, they think above and beyond, but sometimes they think so far off that they end up destroying the, the human society. And so what happened is we start to adapt on, you know, grains and seeds. And if you go back, you know, broccoli, there was no such thing as broccoli. Broccoli was invented almost back in the 1200 by Italians. The, you know, tomatoes, we all know there's 50 carcinogenics right. in tomatoes, for example. So a lot of the stuff were actually introduced. We weren't meant to eat them, but because we have such a wide range of the way we think, especially with the scientists, we start to actually manipulate things and we start to play with things. For example, if you look at the the grains you know the grain when they used to, when they used to grow it it used to grow about five feet with roughly about two three inches of seeds holding but since they actually took a specific uh, a genome and they actually uh, transferred it from being at 32 down to 23 now it only grows about two feet but it gives you about 10 inches to 12 inches of seeds so they start to manipulate with food try to manipulate with the uh, vegetables mostly just because they can actually play with them just to actually um because in their mind they think that we overpopulated and we need more food well no we don't um but what happened is imagine you're you're creating something but you don't have much uh, research done on it like we're talking when we're talking research we're talking 30 years 70 years 100 years of research you know if that person ate that specific grain or took a, a flu shot for example what is the outcome, you know, 50 years, 60 years down the road? Are we actually, uh, so, yeah. you know, are we actually giving them some type of disease? Or maybe that was the plan, is to give them some kind of disease and actually reduce the population from being hitting, you know, 100 years old. Hey, let's make sure they hit 60 years old. Let's make sure they hit a 30 years old. Or you know what? Let's just play with their DNA and make sure they actually get a... a um, they live in a disease state from the moment they're born. So when you hit an age of 20 or, or, for example, like myself, early 30s and end up giving them a heart attack. So we reduce right. the population. So, so you work so hard, you work so hard, you make quite a bit of money, you're constantly paying taxes. By the time you hit a specific age, you want to retire, well, guess what? Your, your, your medical bill is three times the amount. So you're back on right. the street again. So you're actually tied in into this circle. And that circle, we have to break free out of it. We have to actually teach everybody if you actually grab and eat the right nutrient dense and stop mm -hmm. looking food as being entertainment, you'll actually be out of that circle. You're not going to be controlled anymore. Well, and that's actually what I was going to ask you just afterwards. Immunity. How have you seen your immunity, I guess, get better since you've gone pretty yeah, much yeah, completely, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, completely carnivore? Um... Oh, it's, it's like night and day. I don't even yeah. w worry about nothing. Uh, you know, I even thought, okay, we are with the COVID issue right now. For example, everybody mm. talks about it, um, especially with people that have an existing disease. Uh, they, there's a high chance for them of possibly catching certain flus or catching certain or increase that disease because of your breathing techniques and stuff. You might shut down your lungs, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, me having living with a heart disease and had a heart attack as well, and many people that I know, as long as you maintain a proper uh, um, dense nutrient diet 
and you eat the right uh, equivalent amount of uh, food. And, and I'm not talking just eating steaks every day. I'm talking eating, you know, nose to tail. You need to eat organs. You need to eat your liver mostly. If you cannot handle, you know, the kidneys and the pancreas and so many other organs just because the flavor is not there. And trust me, I, I've tried most of them. I don't like them. <laughs> You, you know, liver, if you actually compare liver to a lot of them, liver is one of the most dense nutrients found mm -hmm. on earth today, I believe. From the studies I've done, from the comparison I've done, you get more than enough. Uh, yeah, input. Even, beef liver is, yeah, super food, for it's, sure. It's amazing. Beef liver, lamb liver, they're, they're super dense, uh, and you don't need to eat a whole lot. I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, individuals eat, a, you know, a pound or a couple of pounds a week. All you need is roughly less than you know, four ounces a day, less than two ounces a day is plenty because it's nutrient dense and it's so bioavailable. And the only reason I talk so much about a lot of this stuff, now I've done more than 280, close to about 300 blood work over the past couple of years that I've tracked everything I consumed from vitamins, minerals, especially because I have a malfunction in mitochondria. That to me is very, very important. So I kind of try to kind of keep it fully optimized. Now talking about immunity, Yes, of course, you know, when you eat meat, especially me right now, we'll probably talk about it in a bit. I eat mostly raw carnivore for almost two years right now. And when you compare the raw to the cooked, you eat roughly about 40% less. So to me, that means my body is getting more than enough nutrients. And what is the best nutrients for strong immunity? Of course, you have your vitamin D, you got your selenium, you got your vitamin C. There's so many rich vitamins in that food that it completes you. Now, in my case, just because I'm still recovering from certain deficiencies, yes, I still take specific vitamins to replenish that deficiency. Because I had one question from a carnivore person. He's like, when you actually become adapted on a carnivore diet, you can toss away all your supplements. And I have to argue with that because what makes you think the moment you become a carnivorous, that you can actually stop taking all these supplements. What if you actually have a specific disease? That specific disease still requires that, let's say, for example, that vitamin C to actually reduce the amount of um, progression. You still need a specific amount of vitamin C in your body. And what makes you think the moment you become carnivorous, that means you healed your body. All you did is just put a stop on that disease. Keep in mind, it took you 10, 20, 30 years to get to that disease. So what makes you think you can drop it in one day? So I, I say this right. to everybody, right. never do that. Continue taking that vitamin for sure, but do constantly some testing. And when that test becomes positive that that vitamin is fully uh, optimized in your system, by all means, drop it. But don't drop it out to start because it will cause certain issues and certain effects in your body. And that's why a lot of audience they still actually when they go on a ketogenic or they go on a carnivore they drop some supplements and they still struggle um, and a lot of them still struggle with electrolytes potassium calcium because they're not getting enough and they're not eating nose to tail properly well here's i feel on supplements yes we're eating healthy we're a animal based keto is what we eat primarily but I mean, even though we've been doing this for about three and a half years and we feel good, our labs are all awesome, I don't mind the extra vitamin D. I don't mind the extra magnesium because why not hedge your bets on the things that you know yes. are still going to be beneficial? Even if you're an optimal, those little things can still provide some value to you, even if you are optimal. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's, it's true, 100%. And, and, but we've got to keep in mind as well, too, like the meat we're currently buying right now is it the same meat as how it used to be thousands of years, hundreds oh, of years ago? Right. Right? right? So, so, so a lot of this meat is, is a process is, okay, it's got at a butcher, but when you start to actually adapt raw, like I did, and you actually walk into an in-store and you buy a piece of meat, you can actually taste some of the chemicals sprayed or some of the enzymes such as chloride mm -hmm. or other things. Um, right. so, 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 of course, these bacteria or these... Uh, chemicals that spray in certain meats and stuff, they are actually still acting as an anti-nutrient and they're still pulling certain minerals mm -hmm. and vitamins from our body. So having that supplement, you know, especially magnesium or other things, it is a must. And sometimes we, we might have to kind of stick to it for a long time till maybe, you know, 
20, 30 years down the road, or possibly we start to hunt again. But you know, to get to that point is very limited to a lot of individuals. So, so having right. that supplement uh, as a side thing, definitely you do require it. And right here, I mean, U.S. especially, most of our meat is the uh, factory, um, our meat. So a lot of it, it's not going to have the quality that you're looking for unless you can find a grass-fed, grass-finished beef or grass-fed, grass-finished um, lamb or mm-hmm. goats. or You have to find the animals that aren't in these farm uh, factories, not in pump full of hormones and that makes it difficult for a lot of people because a lot of people don't have access or they don't look for the higher quality meat or there is always that financial part um, mm-hmm. so that people can't afford the higher quality meat so that's always something to look at here yeah and it really um it makes me think about others that are in the store okay we just found out that you know one of the local groceries corporate groceries I don't know if this is government or not. All of the meat is now prepackaged. Yeah. All of it. Do people really consider this isn't an animal that's coming off of a farm that's being cut up and putting in a package? Do they really even consider there's probably chemicals all over this meat that I'm going to go ahead and put on my stove to go ahead and feed my kids? Yeah. You know, so that's why we now are looking at local um, farms that are going to go ahead and have a butcher that goes ahead and doesn't go through that whole process for our own family's sake. No, no, it is absolutely 100%. And you have to, like, I've been, you know, I, I speak about, you know, me eating uh, raw carnivore, but and I started doing that. And, you know, you can tell the difference between getting it fresh from a, from a farmer compared to mm-hmm. even if you actually walk into a butcher it's totally night and day and you actually buy it pre-packaged it's way off like flavor wise taste wise texture wise it's way up but you know how many people actually will go the extra step to actually look for that some of them they just they said you know how with it meat is meat i'm just gonna eat it fine no problem you can still have packaged meat and i've seen a lot of People still eat a lot of packaged meat from uh, store bought because they don't have the access, which is understandable. Um, but still, keep in mind that there is certain chemicals. So the same way you go to the center aisle and you grab, um, you know, a specific uh, product and you look in the ingredients, and suddenly you have ten different ingredients in there. You're gonna grab the meat, a packaged meat, and probably it has ten different ingredients, but it's all hidden. Because in yeah. their mind, yeah, you know, a lot of the public, not the public, a lot of the uh, butchers or a lot of the government in their mind is like, okay, you're going to sear it. You're going to, what am I talking about sear it? You're going to actually overcook the damn thing and whatever chemicals in it is gone, it's depleted. And that's how right. a lot of them think. But right now we all know and we've all been educated that, you know, the less the meat is cooked, the more nutrients it holds, the more beneficial is going to actually satisfy you. So that's where, you know, the individual, if they end up sticking to that carnivore for life, they start to have to actually go above and beyond, start, you know, looking into it, you know, grass fed, grass finished, pre-packaged, or do I go to the butcher? Uh, unfortunately, you can buy uh, a couple of pounds from the butcher. You either have to buy half a calf or the full thing. You just got to have storage for it. And it's all about, you know, how much can you afford and whether you have the funds for it. And the unfortunate thing right now, of course, with the COVID-19 issue and stuff and people, you know, working from home or even losing their jobs um, is becoming even more and more difficult. So it's almost like we're getting more tied in right now and being controlled that, you know, all our health and nutritionists out there and all our us people like, like yourselves and myself who wants to kind of continue thriving and have a good life. Uh, we're kind of almost starting to get crushed a bit. Now, as a uh, carnivore, this question is kind of, right now they are coming out with a lab-grown meats. Meats are being grown in labs. What's your opinion oh, on that? I'm kind, of, I'm kind of not thinking that's healthy. Um, they are stating that there are essential aminos and proteins in there, but what's your take on the new lab-grown meats they're putting out there right now? You, you know, you know I'm that type of person where I like a single ingredient and I like to actually grab it and eat it. And sometimes, like for the past two and a half years, I haven't even used salt or I haven't right. used peppers or anything on my meat. So imagine 
okay, we all understand, you know, you eat the 100 grams of protein, that protein breaks down into uh, amino acids. Now you get your 22 essential amino acids, and some are good for your vision, some are good for your muscle tissue, some are good for your gut, so on and so forth. You can buy these separate aminos, understandable. But, you know, these guys are actually grabbing these amino acids and saying, hey, if a steak has a 22 essential amino acid, now we're going to take these amino acids and put them in a freaking 3D printer and print a, a piece of meat. And, right. And now, instead of actually getting protein where your body has to break it down, imagine now you're eating a piece of steak that is pure 22 essential amino acids. And, and you know, give it 10, 20 years down the road, they're going to say, hey, this steak will give you cognition. This steak will, will give you muscle mass. This steak will make you lose body fat because right now they're manipulating with the amino acids. So let's go back 20,000 years ago or 15,000 years ago when we started with the grain production. Well, hey, let's, uh, let's produce more grains by playing with the, with the genome and actually change yeah, it from 32 right. to 23. So now, okay, fine. You can do that steak and everything. Then it doesn't become a steak. It becomes more of a supplement. Now, let's take that supplement and give it to a human. And now they're not going to gain weight or nothing because these amino acids are going for certain things. Now, if you live in a, a modern life, such as you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is you grab your phone, you check your emails, you haven't even opened up your eyes to look at the sun, you get up, you shower, you get ready, you grab some cornflakes, some milk, and you head to, the, uh, to your work. Uh, you're hungry, you, you pull up a, a protein bar. Well, what is a protein bar? It's the same thing. It's just, it's whey. They're using whey, which is still animal-based. But suddenly you're going to grab a, a protein bar, but it's actually it's an amino acid bar that has actually been 3D printed. And you're going to eat it. So for a modern person out there, this is going to work. Because a lot of us these days are actually becoming lazy. And we're, right. we're becoming lazy. Stay at home. Stay away from the flu from the flus. And stay at home and don't worry, we're gonna feed you the right product. And so so all it is right now, we're all being controlled and we're gonna be controlled even more by that food. Now, what is the long term study of that food? Well nobody knows. Um, None right. You know, yes, you see it on television where people are trying to mm, taste like meat, taste like chicken. Like come <laughs> on, they, they they can manipulate with the flavor so much. It's like going, you know, back in two thousand and one, um I used to actually manage uh uh, GNC stores across uh, Alberta, the, the location I live. And, you know, every time there's a new supplement, everybody goes wild and they want to try it out and everything. And one of the first supplement that came out was by Optimum Nutrition, I believe it was back in the day, was liquid amino acid. And everybody was like, wow, I can take one tablespoon of liquid amino acid is equivalent to 12 grams of protein. So if I can take 10 of these, now I get 120 grams and that's it, that's right. all I need. But yet you're putting something in your system that is not really recognized by your body. Therefore your liver, your organ is gonna work twice as hard to figure out the chemical compound of it so they can be able to break it down. There's no such thing as you take it and it's gonna go to the bloodstream instantly. Everything has to actually go through the digestive tract. But if your body cannot recognize it, even thought if it's actually man-made amino acid, a lot of these man-made amino acid, there's still chemicals pulled out from certain uh, corn, from certain cheapest product out there. Now you're going to make a meat and actually feed it to me. So what do you think is going to be the uh, side effect of that? You know, you're getting zero essential fatty acids probably. You're getting zero fat. You're getting pure protein. Well, it's like you take an egg and you remove the white and you only eat the yolk. Or you get a lot of bodybuilders, they remove the yolk and they only eat the white because they've been programmed to store right. cholesterol. You don't need it. Um, but the moment you actually take something and you break it, you just actually broke down the amino acid. And if you notice, Dr. Eric once he did a study, if you take the egg yolk, it will actually spike your insulin, I believe, was like 12%. You eat the egg white, it will spike at 33%. You consume them together, only spikes at 8%. So, wow. So there's something we have to kind of look above and beyond. We cannot just make things from amino acids and other things and try to consume it because you're playing such a danger role in your system that it's going to manipulate certain things or it's going to spike certain insulin at a specific level that it's not supposed to. 
Like, come on, there's technically <laughs> about nine different insulin levels it could be spiked. So which one are we spiking? Are we spiking the one for, for cancer growth? Are we spiking the one for muscle growth or for fat growth? We don't know. Well, you know, with the information that you're sharing, it really reminds me, we were born we were created with all of these animals, right? Yes. Keep it simple. We were made to go ahead and consume these animals, you know, naturally. And as we go ahead and get our hands in there and are trying to say, well, you know what? We can make this and we can make this. We can go ahead and consume this. All of this is just complicating the situation. It's really not simplifying it. No, no, absolutely. Like it's, uh, it's, it's getting, if, if you actually, like we think about it, what's happening today and, you know, give it 10, 20, 30 years, you know, things are going to be like night and day. Uh, a lot more things are going to be uh, produced, let's just say. Mm -hmm. um, there's always something they're going to try to introduce to actually keep lowering that uh, uh, mind of us that we're thinking. Because right now, the moment we start to actually adapt on a healthy diet, we start to kind of think above and beyond certain things and we start to question certain things and we start to possibly see certain influences where they're uh, gathering funds to do more studies. Um, so what is the outcome? Are we going to, uh, you know, continue being shut down and it's only going to be a certain group who will actually thrive or what's going to happen? Nobody knows because uh, things are changing daily. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, let me go ahead and wrap this up. I am, I'm so grateful that I we were. Oh, no, no. I want to hear about the challenge first. I want to oh, hear the about challenge? the challenge. Tell I, about and the I challenge. forgot. Go ahead. And what's that challenge that you had put out there? Oh, we sorry. are going to hop on this. So, you know, we're we going to hop on it this time around. So Awesome. Uh, so, so with the challenge, uh, it was one of my videos. I did mention it, it was an eight week program. I believe it was. Uh, and the, the whole idea is what, what I do is. I take, so, so I don't do what a lot of companies been doing. You know, you go to a, to a, a software online, you, you punch in your information, suddenly it spits out a program for you. But right. to me is every person should be 110% fully customized. What works for you is not going to work for your husband and vice versa. You know, women are different than men and men are different than women. Women, they actually have to hit a certain heart rate level. Men, they don't have to uh, at a certain way of, of a training. So it's all the, the program kind of puts everything you do from the moment you wake up till the moment you go to sleep. Um, what you put in your mouth, you know, whether coffee, cream, uh, how many meals a day you eat and what is your goal? Do you want to actually put on muscle mass or do you want to actually lose body fat or do you want to actually just maintain a healthy look do you want to be in a high percentage body fat between 15 and 18 percent have some fat to actually feel as isol uh, as insulation for the winter or do you want to be at a less than 10 percent look shredded all year long so so the program right. is fully fully customized per person and the only reason i take the carnivorous uh, into this because i look at the carnivorous diet as being an elimination diet. So I have individuals where they adapt on that elimination diet, they do it for three, four months, but there are certain things they love to do, you know, whether it's drinking coffee or maybe having berries or maybe honey once in a while or whatever it is. So what we do is I will actually allow them to introduce that certain uh, food into their diet, but how do you feel, you know, two hours after, six hours after, 24 hours after. How do you feel three days after? You know, did you lose any cognition? Did you lose any digestive issue? Is your poop different? Is your uh, mental clearness different? So what changed? How's your energy level, your strength? So, so everything is actually fully customized in that, in that diet for that specific person. Because for example, if that specific person, for example, like myself comes from a vegetarian, uh, part of the world well you know if you go back in history we did consume a lot of fish a lot of olives well if i get somebody right. coming from north america over the past years they end up consuming higher fat than the mediterranean because they need that for insulation to actually stay warm for example so every person is different yes certain people can thrive on eating uh, two to one ratio fat to protein some might only need 0.5 to one so we cannot 
everybody assume, hey, we should all eat uh, two grams of fat Sorry. per one pound of body fat. It's so different and it's utilized different based on our energy level and based how much we give us. So the whole program is kind of fully customized from the nutrition side to the fitness side to the way uh, you think about, about life. You know, do we actually, do I wake up every morning and be thankful and take a step outside for five, 10 minutes to actually, you know, ground my body or do I just open up the phone and check my email and start my day that way? So there's a lot of different things into it. Yeah. So I try to kind of mm. input all that info into one program so therefore, it's not just a specific diet, it's almost like a full lifestyle that's gonna actually give you a step to actually uh, take on and actually change things. Now, how many people stick to it? Um, very, very small amount because a lot of them, they like, the, uh, uh, they, they like that comfort zone where right. sometimes everything is access accessible. And that's why with that comfort zone, I did introduce uh, a carb load uh, based on an individual could be like once a week or twice, twice a week or could be a carb night where you know something they can have at night as a cheat just to kind of uh, that craving or that urgency of or that craving of sugar or certain things will actually start to diminish slowly but it will end up mm -hmm. helping them to stick to that program and be able to control what works for them and what doesn't mm. yeah. very cool yeah well, so our uh, listeners know, where can they follow you? Where can they find out more about you? So definitely uh, they can go to my main website, which is my full name, mauricedeher.com. Uh, they can check out my Instagram as well under the same name, Twitter. Um, or they can actually as well check out my YouTube channel. Uh, my YouTube uh, channel, it is uh, Carnivore Done Right. That's the channel okay. name as well, too. Um, and that's the way they can get a hold of me. They can email me. I'm more than happy if they actually seen some of my previous videos. I do, uh, I do respond to each individual, and each individual will actually respond differently than, than the other. And, of course, if they take this very, very serious and they want to proceed with certain changes, they actually contact me, and we proceed from there as well, too. That's awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. And I'll make sure I get that in the notes today, too, just so everybody can jump on board with us. Yes. Right, right, right. Sounds good. Excellent. Well, let me go ahead as we wrap this up. What would be your your greatest suggestion for those listeners that may be like thinking about this, but are like, I don't think I can do that. What would be your suggestion as they're making that decision? Um, you, you know, put it in yourself that way, um, what is your goal? Um, let's just put the health goal on the side, but what is your goal optimally, performance, uh, sleeping-wise, cognition-wise, business-wise, what is your goal? You know, ask yourself that question. If all these things are actually stressing you out, for example, or all these things you're constantly thinking about them and you cannot control it because a lot of them, they actually run into what is called the monkey brain, where your brain is constantly going. You have a thousand things going right. through your mind. What if I told you the carnivore diet, there's something that could actually be able to take control of your life again. And what I mean by control is one thing is financially, you can reduce cost of your groceries mm -hmm. uh, financially. You can reduce cost of living and accessories, additional accessories that the body requires. For example, from brushing your teeth, from uh, you know, ghost wiping, from so many different things. What if I told you you can actually adapt on that, eat a steak every day, but you actually feel 100% optimized. It doesn't mean you have to wake up one morning and say, oh, well, you know, I don't feel good. I had a very, very night, uh, late night. I'm going to go back to sleep. What if I told you, you know, over Christmas, I stayed up till three o'clock in the morning, woke up at six, three hours of sleep, but I was 100% recovered. I have a lot of uh, gadgets that I actually wear every morning and I actually check my heart rate, especially my recovery rate and everything. What if I told you all it takes is three hours for you to recover, not four days, five days, like it used to be back in the day. Even thought, even thought I did eat some mixes but uh -huh. there's a way to actually take that and implement it in your lifestyle 
and actually still wake up and feel 100% optimized, whether it's for work-related, family-related. Don't you want to have the energy and the skills and the knowledge to actually head 100 years old but still be able to run with your great-grandkids, for example? So why not, right. why not you know, put yourself in that situation? And the way you can tell, one quick thing is, you know, I came uh, against an article I was reading. It says, if you eat vegetables... If you eat greens, your body will digest it in about an hour and a half, two hours. If you eat meat, it takes nine hours. If you eat fish, it takes uh, 10 hours. But if you actually look at the study that was done, and you know everything they spoke was totally wrong. It's actually the opposite. If you eat meat and fish, within an hour, two hours, it's gone, it's, it's, it's being digested, your body utilizes it. But yet, if you eat vegetables, it can take one day to actually process it. And you know me going back, couple years ago back in 2004 2005 when we we're actually doing a test to see how's your bowel movement like and you know they always recommend eating beets and stuff because it comes out red my digestion right. was so freaking slow anything i ate would take three days for it to be processed digested and out so in that three days you're causing so much bacteria overgrowth so much fermentation in your gut so much health issues Mm -hmm. Yet, I, till today, I still meet 20 years old, early 30s, um, early in their teens, they're struggling with their health of their gut because everything we thought was healthy, we still consume it. And one thing is, I want to tell this to everybody, a doctor has less than 30 hours of nutritional uh, uh, education. So don't rely on that. Yeah, a right. doctor has only been taught to treat a sick person. A doctor does not know what to do with a healthy individual. So mm -hmm. I want this to everybody keep in mind. Don't assume that every time there's something wrong with you, you go run and see a doctor because they are clueless. Right, right. All right, well, I do want to thank you for being mm -hmm. on with us at Heart Healthy Lives Podcast. And we are going to have to do a follow-up and yes. see how things are going this summer. Hopefully, um, COVID is a little less and we can get out more because it's, it's been a year or so. We're ready for the new year and be able mm -hmm. to get a little more active, you know, outside more. So, Well, and with this uh, new year coming, I am ready and roaring to go ahead. And I don't know. I think I'm going to go full full time with this carnivore diet. All right. There we go. That's awesome. Hey, thanks so much, guys. Uh, for bringing me over to your uh, show and uh, definitely look forward to staying in touch. Absolutely. Alrighty. We definitely will. We'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, Thank you.